Hello, and welcome to a new episode of D&D Tips. Today we will be coming a spell. Each, thir- each Friday will be a spell. Today's spell is Thunderous Smite. Each um, spell I do, I will try to have a story behind it. Because I, I am the DM of a campaign, and DM is Dungeon Master. I'll probably have like tips for Dungeon Masters and players, and like rules and stuff on Tuesdays. And I'll do spells and incantations and all that stuff on Fridays. Uh, because I have nothing on Friday. So, the first spell we'll be covering is Thunderous Smite. F- for these videos, the first part will be me just talking about the um, spell, what level it is, how to use it, if it's range, components, all that stuff, and what it does. So the this spell, Thunderous Smite, is a first level evocation. Its casting time is one bonus action. The range is yourself. Components is only verbal. Uh, and the duration is concentration, which means you can't sp- cast any other spells, at least for me, uh, during while you're using this spell. So what this spell does is I make it so that your weapon sort of pulses with electricity, and the first time you hit it, uh, a creature with that weapon, uh, after you use that spell, um, it creates a huge thunderous noise, like a thunder strike, and does an extra 2d6 thunder damage, which is quite a bit. Um, so, and if the creature succeeds on a strength saving throw, which is like just the, I think, abilities, which I might be doing next Tuesday, um, if they succeed, they don't get, they don't get knocked prone, and if, but if they do succeed, or if they don't succeed, they get <coughs> pushed back 10 feet and get knocked prone, which means they can't, they have to use their action, for me at least, to stand up, and they can't do any attacking or anything while they're knocked prone. The story behind this spell is one time when I was in an older campaign, about, I think, my second campaign, with my two friends, Gianni and Emil, uh, and Alex. Um, those are three different people, not Gianni, Emil is what, not one name. But, um, so Emil, or Gianni and uh, Alex, both of them were just attacking a horde of goblins, protecting a green hag's hut. So the green hag was, like, still inside the hut because she kidnapped a bunch of children, and their mission was to rescue one of the children, or one of the child. I don't even know what I'm saying, but, um, and they were, and the hut was guarded by goblins, so there were about a couple of goblins and a couple of hog goblins and I think one bugbear, uh, so their plan was to stealth around it and try to just take out weaker goblins, like pick them off, and then get into the hut, but they got completely noticed, um, Gianni and Alex did, while Emil was pretty far away. And Gianni and Alex started attacking, but there were way too many for them to handle. Trap, it was a ditch. So he fell inside a ditch, and then he was thunderous, might actually. And he drove them all into him, so that all of them were distracted by him. So those two tried to pick them off from far away, so then they can sneak into there. But it was not very good for Emil, because he had about, like, maybe five goblins, two hobgoblins, and a bugbear just trying to knock at him in a ditch, but Gianni and Alex took care of them with, I think, a combination of Hail of Thorns, which I'll be doing next week, and just, you know, ranged attacks. It was pretty cool to see. And then, of course, Emil got his extra damage in with Thunderous Smite, and I think took down one of the the bigger uh, attackers. It was very cool. I liked uh, the use of the spell. And then they, of course, went on to attack the Green Hag, which I modified for my team. I'll maybe have a story video about the big Green Hag adventure. That's most of my starting points.